Hi, my name is Daisy. And I'm Ellen. Are you curious how to best prepare for a technical interview and what interviewers are actually looking for? If you said yes, then you are not alone. One of my favorite parts of working at Microsoft is our focus on growth mindset and the encouragement to never stop learning. So we wanted to bring a piece of that culture to you by creating a resource that can help you to better understand the technical interview process. We want you to leave your interview feeling you did the absolute best that you could do. So over the next few minutes, we'll cover a quick overview of what to expect in a technical interview and how to tackle technical questions and organize your thoughts using the STAR method situation, task, action, and results. After that, we'll do a mock interview so that you can see the STAR method in action during an interview scenario. So whew, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get going. What can you expect from a technical interview? First round interviews are typically 30 minutes and they can be in person or over the phone. Final round interviews will be made up of two to five 45 minute interviews in one day depending on the role that you're interviewing for. And they're typically at our headquarters in Redmond, Washington. The interview will be a combo of behavioral, technical, and resume-based questions. Note that anything on your resume is fair game for your interviewer to ask you questions about. So make sure that you feel comfortable discussing projects or using the concepts and skills that you've listed on your resume. The first goal of our interviews is to gauge what you know. We want to see into your thought process as much as possible. So it's important to think out loud and ask clarifying questions because this helps us to understand the extent of your knowledge as well as evaluate how you think and go about solving problems. We also want to see what it's like to work with you. And interviewers can gauge that through asking about group projects that you've been a part of as well as seeing how you ask those clarifying questions and really partner with them throughout the interview. It's important as well to be ready to discuss experiences that you've had in a group dynamic because no matter where in Microsoft you end up, you'll always be working in a team. And above all, remember that your interviewer wants you to succeed. They're not trying to trip you up or stump you. They're just trying to get into that amazing brain of yours to understand what it's like to work with you and the extent of your knowledge and abilities. And now Daisy will show you what the STAR method is and how to use it to help break down technical problems. To help us tackle coding questions, we are going to use a simple method called STAR. The first two steps, situation and task, are about understanding the problem and coming up with a working solution. The second two steps, action and results, are about actual coding, optimizing your solution, and testing. For the situation step, remember that the problem comes before coding, so make sure you listen to the problem and understand it. I found that writing the problem down helps, asking clarifying questions, and agreeing on inputs and outputs with your interviewer. As you get into the task portion, this is about coming up with a solution. You're still not coding yet. Run your ideas out loud to your interviewer. Start with a simple case, then proceed to a working solution. This is also a good place to start coming up with examples to make sure your solution works. Keep these examples for later testing. Action is where you start coding. As you code, keep the following in mind. Use a language that you are already comfortable with. Try to write very clean code using clear variable names and function names. It is okay to have bugs. Just make sure to catch them early through testing. Always ask before using any libraries. And last but not the least, modularize by writing helper functions. The result step is all about getting feedback and writing tests. Not only is testing a great practice, it is rare that everything is perfect the first time. Run through your earlier examples, line by line, not in your head, but on the board. Listen for feedback from your interviewer and use it. Part of being a good engineer is the ability to analyze the performance of your code. Make sure you talk about the trade-offs of space and time complexity. And now let's walk through a coding example in an interview scenario together. Ellen will play the part of the interviewer and I will play the part of the candidate. All right, Daisy, so the coding question that I have for you today is, given a string, write an algorithm that will determine if it is a palindrome. Okay, um, so just to confirm, a palindrome is a sentence or word that reads the same backwards and forward. For example, 
um, Anna. It's a palindrome. And Len is not. Yes, that is correct. And also an empty string is a palindrome or a single character string. But how would we handle punctuations or numbers? You can just skip over those for now. So I would make a function is palindrome and then take in the string as input and then return true or false. Sounds good. So I have an idea. We can take all the valid characters and put them into an array, copy the array, reverse it, and compare both of them. That's a good idea, that would work. So as a human, how do you try to figure out if a string is a palindrome? Well, I usually look at the characters on the outside, compare them, and kind of walk my way to the center. I think I would actually implement it that way because it doesn't take the extra memory. Time and space complexity of this solution would be O of N. I'm gonna implement this, and to do that, I need to keep track of the starting and ending point. So, start, would be at zero, and then end would be at the length of the string minus one. And then we go through while start is less than end. We want to check both characters and compare. So the first character is C1, and that is at the starting point. But before I use C1, I want to put it in lowercase in case we need to compare a little a and a big A, for example. So we put that to lower, and then C2 will be pretty much the same, also to lower. So to compare both characters, I need to make sure that they're valid before I compare. So let's assume that I have some function is valid char. I'm actually gonna implement this um, later. So let's call that is valid char C1. So if C1 is valid and C2 is also valid, then immediately we compare. So we compare and then if there's a mismatch between them, we know that we're not at a palindrome. So here we return false. So now we just keep going, so we increment to the next two characters. So start will be incremented, and then end will be decremented because we're going inwards. So there's also a case where it's possible that one of these characters is not valid, right? So in that case, we want to check that if not is valid char c1, if this is the case, um, then we just skip over that one. And then for the end, we skip over by decrementing. So if c2 is not valid, we skip over by decrementing end. So if we've gone through all of this, and we have no discrepancy in this case, we can assume that we have a palindrome, so all of this will just return true. I haven't implemented my is valid char yet, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And for that one, I'm just gonna call it def is valid char c. And all it does in our example is check if it's an alphabetical character. So it returns c that is alpha. So what do you think? How would you optimize your solution? I can see that I'm calling is valid char a few times. So my optimization would be to um, call it once and save the return value and just reuse the variable in case is valid char becomes computationally expensive or we decide to extend it to be more um, characteristics of validation. Great, that looks good. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so let's go through the key takeaways from today. Treat your interview like it's an exam. Studying is important, and you want to make sure you're able to present your best self on the day of your interview. And remember the STAR method. So as you study, apply it to both behavioral and technical questions. Practice whiteboarding and verbalizing your way through technical problems. It's easy to get thrown off if you're not used to doing it. And if possible, we usually try to save a couple of minutes at the end of your interview for any questions that you might have. So try to prepare one to two thoughtful questions. And remember, you're interviewing us just as much as we're interviewing you. Thanks so much for watching. And good luck on your interview.